Today we're going to be taking a look at RAM and the differences between single channel and dual channel and how 8 gigs, 16 gigs, and 32 gigs will affect your gaming experience on the Ryzen platform at 1080p. We'll be taking a look at five different titles at two different graphical presets. First, the minimum preset, and this is to try and remove the GPU as the bottleneck. And then we will look at the highest preset that the game has, and this is to see what a more typical gaming experience will be like. Okay, now before we get to the results, I wanted to quickly go over what single and dual channel means. Now, if you look at a motherboard, you'll see these long slots beside the CPU. Now, typically there are four of these, but sometimes there are two of them, and depending on the motherboard chipset, there may be eight. Most mainstream chipsets will have four, and these four are broken up into two channels, A channel and B channel, both with A1 and A2. So we get A1, A2, and B1, B2. To use dual channel, you'll need to have one stick of RAM in both A channel and B channel, such as A2 and B2. Everyone got that? Good. Here are the specs to my test rig. The motherboard is an ASRock X470 Tai Chi. The CPU is a Ryzen 5 2600 with all cores overclocked to 4.1 gigahertz. The CPU cooler is the up here AC12 RGB. The GPU is an overclocked Zotec GTX 1070 Mini. The RAM I'm using is the G-Skill Aegis, uh, eight gig DIMMs uh, that are running at 3000 megahertz and the timings are 16, 18, 18, 38. The PSU is an EVGA 650 GQ, and I have the games loaded up on a Team Group 1TB SATA 3 SSD. Now, on to the results. I started the testing in Far Cry 5 at the low preset and checked most DIMM configurations, and the results were as to be expected. The one 8GB DIMM was the slowest, the two 8GB DIMMs running in single channel were slightly faster, the two 8GB DIMMs running in dual channel were again slightly faster, and running three or four DIMMs are pretty much within the margin of error of the two 8GB DIMMs running in dual channel. This was the only title and preset that I was testing so many different DIMM configurations. Call this a proof of concept, and yes I know. Some games may not have such a gap between single channel and dual channel, but the opposite is likely true as well, that the game may have more of an FPS gap. It all depends on the title. Dirt 4 is next. The one 8 gig DIMM still managed to reach 287 FPS on average, with the 1% lows at 239. Having two 8 gig DIMMs running in single channel gave a 3.5% gain to both the average FPS and the 1% lows. Running two 8 gig DIMMs in dual channel gave an additional 8% gain to the average FPS and a 9% gain to the 1% lows. Testing four 8 gig DIMMs added another 2% to the average FPS while only adding 1% to the 1% lows. The next title up is Resident Evil 2. One 8 gig DIMM reached 147 FPS on average, with the 1% lows dropping to under 100. The two 8 gig DIMMs running in single channel gave a minor boost to 153 average FPS, and the 1% lows were able to stay over 100. Two 8 gig DIMMs running in dual channel gave a massive 17% gain to the average FPS and a whopping 22.5% gain to the 1% lows. Having all four DIMMs added only another 4 FPS to the average for a total of 183 with the 1% lows at 130. On to the Division 2 and we see much the same thing. One 8 gig DIMM reached 154 FPS on average, with the 1% lows dropping to under 95 FPS. Two 8 gig DIMMs running in single channel gave a boost of 6.5% to the average FPS and a 7.5% boost to the 1% lows, allowing it to hit 100. Two 8 gig DIMMs in dual channel gives an 11.5% gain to the average FPS and an 18% gain to the 1% lows. With four DIMMs, the average FPS was 188, and the 1% lows were 124. The last title is Warhammer Vermintide 2. One 8GB DIMM had an average FPS of 126, 
with the 1% lows at 85. Two 8 gig DIMMs running in single channel managed to bring the average FPS up to 131 and the 1% lows were unchanged at 85. Two 8 gig DIMMs in dual channel give nearly a 17% gain to the average FPS bringing it up to 153 while the 1% lows jumped 23.5% to 105. Four DIMMs brought the average FPS up to 158 and the 1% lows to 106. So when using A2 and B2 as the baseline, as this is the recommended configuration, there is an average loss of 14.5% on average when using one 8 gig DIMM and a 16.4% loss to the 1% lows. When using two 8 gig DIMMs in single channel, there is an average loss of 10.5% to the average FPS and a 12.8% loss to the 1% lows. Playing with four 8 gig DIMMs had a modest boost of 2% to the average FPS and a 2.5% boost to the 1% lows. So as you can see, when we remove the GPU as the bottleneck, there can be a sizable performance difference between single channel and dual channel. Okay, now let's see what happens when we stress the GPU a little bit more. Starting with Far Cry 5 at Ultra, one 8 gig DIMM managed an average FPS of 85 with the 1% lows at 64. Two 8 gig DIMMs running in single channel averaged 88 FPS, while the 1% lows were at 66. Two 8 gig DIMMs running in dual channel averaged 95 FPS, with the 1% lows at 68. And running with all four DIMMs gave an average of 97 FPS, with the 1% lows going up to 75 which is a 10% gain over the two 8 gig DIMMs running in dual channel. Dirt 4 at the Ultra preset had one 8 gig DIMM being able to reach an average FPS of 106 with the 1% lows at 78. Two 8 gig DIMMs running in single channel are within the margin of error of the one 8 gig DIMM. Now two 8 gig DIMMs in dual channel gave a little more than a 3.5% gain to the average FPS while seeing a 7.5% gain to the 1% lows. And running all four 8 gig DIMMs didn't change anything at all. Resident Evil 2 at the max preset had one 8 gig DIMM able to reach an average FPS of 107 with the 1% lows at 78. Two 8 gig DIMMs running in single channel are within the margin of error of the one 8 gig DIMM. Two 8 gig DIMMs running in dual channel gave a 2 FPS gain to the average over the single channel test, while we see a 5% gain to the 1% lows. And again, running all four 8 gig DIMMs didn't change anything over the other dual channel test. Division 2 at Ultra, we see one 8 gig DIMM reaches an average FPS of 68, with the 1% lows at 46. Two 8 gig DIMMs running in single channel on average had a 69 FPS, and the 1% lows are improved to 51, and that's an 11% gain. Now this indicates that 8 gigs is simply not adequate when playing Division 2 on Ultra. Two 8 gig DIMMs in dual channel ran at an average of 70 FPS, and we see an increase of 7.5% for the 1% lows. And again, we see four 8 gig DIMMs didn't change anything over the other dual channel test. Vermintide 2 at Extreme, one 8 gig DIMM had an average FPS of 84, with the 1% lows at 60. Two 8 gig DIMMs running in single channel managed to bring the average FPS up to 90, with the 1% lows at 63. Two 8 gig DIMMs running in dual channel ran at an average FPS of 100, and the 1% lows are improved by 17% to 74. Now this indicates that Vermintide 2 really prefers dual channel memory configurations. And to finish it off, the 4 gig DIMMs brought the average FPS up to 106, and the 1% lows to 78. As you can see, the difference between most configurations are much smaller now that we are more GPU bound. And again, using A2, B2 as our baseline, there is a 7% loss to the average FPS when using one 8 gig DIMM and a 10.5% loss to the 1% lows. 
When using 2 8 gig DIMMs in single channel, there is a loss of 5% to the average FPS and a 7% loss to the 1% lows. And with 4 8 gig DIMMs, we see a 1.5% gain to the average FPS and a 3% boost to the 1% lows. So what did we learn? We learned that, as always, it depends on what title you're planning on playing and what graphics card you have in your system. Because if you are someone who likes playing at the highest settings possible and only have a mid-range graphics card, then there's a pretty good chance that you won't see much of a difference between single and dual channel. But on the other hand, if you're someone who likes playing at high refresh rates, much like myself, then using dual channel configs to keep those frame times as smooth as possible would be in your best interest. Another argument someone could make would be for budget builds, because if you break down the frames per dollar, then using a single dim can make a lot of sense. But at the time of recording, in the middle of 2019, RAM prices have gotten pretty affordable, so you'd probably only really be saving about $40 to $50 going with the one 8 gig dim. Now that is depending on the type of RAM you go with. And on top of that, I feel the days of 8 gigs being enough for gaming are certainly numbered. Now this is because more and more games are starting to have 8 gigs being the minimum requirements. And because of that, I would certainly recommend buying 16 gigs. Now if you want to buy one 16 gig dim or two 8 gig dims, that's on you. But if you want to have the best gaming experience possible, you should be going with 16 gigs. Well, that's it for now. Uh, is there anything you think I missed? Let me know in the comments below. And all the normal stuff, if you like the video, you know what to do. Click that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.